1972, Thomas Sankara was swept into a revolution for a country not his own. Hailing from the West African nation of Burkina Faso, then known as Upper Volta, the 22-year-old soldier had traveled to Madagascar to study at their military academy. But upon arriving, he found a nation in conflict. Local revolutionaries sought to wrest control of Madagascar from France's lingering colonial rule. These protesters inspired Sankara to read works by socialist leaders like Karl Marx and seek wisdom from military strategy. When he returned to Upper Volta in 1973, Sankara was determined to free his country from its colonial legacy. Born in 1949, Sankara was raised in a relatively privileged household as the third of 10 children. His parents wanted him to be a priest, but like many of his peers, Sankara saw the military as the perfect institution to rid Upper Volta of corruption. After returning from Madagascar, he became famous for his charisma and transparent oratorial style, but he was less popular with the reigning government. Led by President Jean-Baptiste Wadrago, this administration came to power in the third consecutive coup d'etat in Upper Volta's recent history. The administration's policies were a far cry from the sweeping changes Sankara proposed. But by 1981, Sankara's popularity won out, earning him a role in Wadrago's government. Nicknamed Africa's Che Guevara, Sankara rapidly rose through the ranks, and within two years, he was appointed prime minister. In his new role, he delivered rallying speeches to impoverished communities, women, and young people. He even tried to persuade other governments to form alliances based on their shared colonial legacy. But Wadrago and his advisors felt threatened by Sankara's new position. They thought his communist beliefs would harm alliances with capitalist countries. And just months after becoming prime minister, Wadrago's administration forced Sankara from the job and placed him on house arrest. Little did the president know, this act would fuel Upper Volta's fourth coup d'etat in 17 years. Civilian protest ensued around the capital and the government ground to a halt while Sankara tried to negotiate a peaceful transition. During this time, Blaise Kampare, Sankara's friend and fellow former soldier, foiled another coup that included an attempt on Sankara's life. Eventually, Wadrago resigned without further violence, and on August 4, 1983, Thomas Sankara became the new president of Upper Volta. Finally in charge, Sankara launched an ambitious program for social and economic change. As one of his first agenda items, he renamed the country from its French colonial title, Upper Volta, to Burkina Faso, which translates to Land of Upright Men. Over the next four years, he established a nationwide literacy campaign, ordered the planting of over 10 million trees, and composed a new national anthem all while cutting down inflated government employee salaries. But perhaps the most unique element of Sankara's revolution was his dedication to gender equality. He cultivated a movement for women's liberation, outlawing forced marriages, polygamy, and genital mutilation. He was the first African leader to appoint women to key political positions and actively recruit them to the military. However, Sankara's socialist policies were met with much resistance. Many students and elites believed his economic plans would alienate Burkina Faso from its capitalist peers. His crackdown on the misuse of public funds turned government officials against him as well. After four years, what began as an empowering revolution had isolated many influential Burkina Bay. But Sankara was not ready to yield his power. He executed increasingly authoritarian actions, including banning trade unions and the free press. Eventually, his autocratic tendencies turned even his closest friends against him. On October 15, 1987, Sankara was conducting a meeting when a group of assailants swarmed his headquarters. Sankara was assassinated in the attack, and many believe the raid was ordered by his friend, Blaise Kampare. Though his legacy is complicated, many of Sankara's policies have proven themselves to be ahead of their time. In the past decade, Burkina Bay youth have celebrated Sankara's political philosophy, and nearby countries like Ghana have even adopted Sankara's economic models. On March 2, 2019, a statue of Sankara was erected in Burkina Faso's capital, establishing his place as an icon of revolution for his country and throughout the world. 
Not all revolutionaries are politicians or soldiers. For an inspiring tale of secret student resistance in Nazi Germany, check out our video on the White Rose, or take a closer look at the stirring poetry of revolutionary and romantic Pablo Neruda. Thank you.